How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Sixkill and welcome back to Meteor World Actor. Badge and Dagger, we just had our conversation with Kodoma. Finally, we finally got to talk to the man with a brick for a face. His name is Kodoma. He's the one that uh, Yamada told us about, who he's been pursuing... <sighs> really? God damn it. He's been pursuing the, uh, the cult or... Uh, what was the other one called? The Shining something or other. Anyway. He's uh, provided us with a lead that we may or may not take because we're worried about getting in trouble. Let's carry on. A week after the whole situation with Fiumi. At first I thought it was all over, but there's one loose end still dangling. Ugh. You should wipe better. The reason why Fiumi got on the case at all. Was it a total bust or did she make some progress? I want to know, so I lurk in the smoking room, waiting. It's the filth. Your face. It's no worse than usual. Give me a break, I was just kidding. I was waiting for you. Can't say I appreciate the ambush. How long have you been waiting? About an hour, give or take. I stopped counting the cigarettes a while ago. It's as if you think smoking these things is your job. There's something I want to ask you, see? Do I get a bonus for how many cigarettes I've smoked? Regarding Margezi and his organisation. Yeah. Who the hell were they? To put it bluntly, human traffickers. Human traffickers, huh? Didn't look that way to me. Allow me to rephrase that. Their organization was founded around human trafficking, but in recent years they've expanded into the drug trade and crimes around the development of extraordinary abilities. He caught the tail, the tra- the tail of the latter branch. Ability development, huh? That checks out. They had nasty powers, but not much practice with them. Maybe they'd only gotten them recently? So? Which tale was she chasing? The drugs? The powers? Neither of those. The organization's core. The human trafficking component. Well, ain't that a puzzler. Did she get kidnapped when she was younger or something? Couldn't be a record like that to make it hard to join the MPA. I doubt she came in through the back door like I did. I want you to forget about this case. Stepping in the middle of it won't help anything. Yeah? We plucked out a solid chunk of their organization. They're weaker now. We should leave it at that. And that's in order to stop asking about Fuyumi. You got any reason I should? Your relationship isn't one in which you should pry further. That is a reason, huh? Maybe I ought to think this through. Pushing these things too far here could change my life. Or at least, that's what my instincts tell me. <laughs> I don't have another choice! I better not pry. It's not like it's got anything to do with me. Good decision. I'll be going. Try to do some work today while you're while you're here. Yeah, yeah. I'm all smoked out anyway. My throat's starting to hurt. It's time I got something new to focus on. Whew. It happens as it happens as I'm starting to make my way home. Hell of a surprise on the caller ID. Yo, what's wrong? You missed me? Don't you have any notion of phone etiquette? I know you're not supposed to be such a sourpuss. No one can speak to you without souring on the concept of conversation itself. You don't know that. It's maybe one in a hundred. Do you have a hundred contacts to try on? Why do I have to take this? She's the one who called me. If this is a prank call, I'm going to hang up. We need to speak about the case the other day. The other day, you mean the Chimera case? Yes. Yakuta says the case is wrapped up with a bar. We caught one end of the human trafficking operation. What's there to talk about? I investigated the organization of the case some more, independently. I made some new discoveries. Independently, you really don't learn, huh? You may relax, I didn't violate any regulations this time. While I have no obligation to report to you, I think you have the right to know what I found. However, I'd prefer not to discuss it on the phone, if we could meet directly. Sure, she didn't violate any regulations. If she hadn't, why would she insist on a meet? You're a treat, okay? What? Don't you want me? Read the room, woman. Oh, you mean love and peace. That's the idea. Very well. The reluctance is palpable, but Fiumi agrees. So, what's this about? I thought Mar Margarita spilled everything he knew. Margezi. You want pizza margarita and some spaghetti? Ah, uh, no, that's not what... Sounds good, yeah, that's our order. Okay. <laughs> Once our pizza, pasta and drinks are assembled, the two of us get down to business. Margezi was into... Was it... Indicted? For a string of related murders? 
He's also awaiting judgment on other counts related to drugs, smuggling, and the illegal propagation of powers. We got him dead to rights. Leniency ain't happening, but he might as well talk. Their powers related operation, that is Project Chimera, involve recruiting people to transport meaningless goods. In the course of the delivery, those people were tested for unusual abilities, and anyone deemed a viable candidate. You know the rest. That's about what I figured. They're trying to mix up the ultimate Keeper cocktail. Now, what I'm about to tell you exceeds the scope of what the police can investigate. I thought you hadn't broken regulations. I thought you knew why this meeting was face to face. Go on. I recovered some blood and tissue from Alpha and Beta, because once they were in custody, it would be too late. Why'd you go and do a thing like that? To determine who they were before they were fused. DNA analysis ultimately revealed that the four people merged into Alpha and Beta had been missing individuals. The oldest among them has been missing for 10 years. How'd you figure that out? I did not want to rely on him, but I went to Strikos. Sounds expensive, could you afford that? He did it for free. He did what? He purchased the results from me for the same amount they cost to determine, to be more precise. I'm not allowed to pass the information to anyone but you. The smooth criminal. What a rap sheet. Kidnapping and on top of that ability based chimerization. Sounds like they were scoring based on laws broken. It really is. Getting part of you stuck inside me was an object lesson on the terrors of that man's ability. Say that one more time. What? Part of me got what again? Stuck in- She works out what I'm doing and graces me with a glare. Please spare me your jokes. Oh, I wasn't joking. <laughs> You're losing points again. Regardless, the matter with Marghese is settled. Good to know. I'll set aside this just the slightest gratitude to you, in my heart. Slight? Don't be shy. Give me a nice big slice. Fiumi knits her brow and ponders. Impossible. You can do it if you try. I owe you somewhat for what you did, but I feel as if you owe me as well. I'm not sure you did me any favours. Foot the bill for our feast here and I'll call it even. What? Well, I don't mind, but... Then let's throw a beer in for me too, Ryoko. Aren't you on the clock? I can't give you liquor. The customer comes first, you narc. What kind of a restaurant refuses an order? Bring him a kitty beer, non-alcoholic. You know what? I don't need one. You know what else? They don't have those. I'll be right out with that. Just wait one moment. They have those? Wow. That's all I wanted to report. Fumi stands to go. Aren't you gonna eat first? I'm not on the- I'm on the clock. It's bad enough that I snuck out here at all. Now, if you'll excuse me. See ya. Fumi wastes no time in walking off. Once she's gone, Ryoko flips the open sign on the door. You're closing up? I got plans today. It can't be. A date with a man? Huh? Over my dead body? It isn't a date. Well, so she claims, but something strange. In all the long years I've frequented love and peace, I've never known them to close early. Is Ryoko in some trouble? I lie and wait outside for Ryoko. If she's waiting for a guy, I want to see his face. Please stop stalking the lady. Because I was after her body too, goddammit. <laughs> something I'd never think. I'm a gentleman. Never even crossed my mind, okay? You're in a monologuing. Are you trying to convince yourself? After some 30 minutes, Yoko comes out. I guess she's finished closing. Never thought I'd be tailing her. I follow her, never letting, never letting her out of my sight. I keep on her for 10 minutes. But something's bothering me. Man, Yoko looks good. Even from behind, her style is impeccable. Naturally, she's swaying her, her way beautifully on without noticing me, heading for her destination. So, where's she meeting this no good punk? Could not be someplace illicit. She turns the corner, briefly, she's out of sight. Moments later, I follow. Hmm? Ryoko isn't there, there's only a scattering of people. Did she go into a shop or something? Not possible, there wasn't time. I rounded the corner fast enough to see her go inside. So what happened? I must have slipped up. Wish I'd made more of an effort in hindsight. It's for the best, don't you think? What are you talking about? It's, this is this is the lady's private life. A case is one thing, but you're being a stalker. Shut it. I wasn't going to do anything. Still, let's get back to work, okay? Fine, fine. Something about it sticks wrong in my craw, but I can't argue. I head back to the station. Agreed. Shouldn't stalk the lady. Bad man. Don't be bad. No stalky. This is point A. Target located. He's here.
Good. Everything's in place. This is point B. Target entering the goal area. Taking some distance. Continuing surveillance. Target speaking to someone. Hasn't noticed us. This is A. Can you get audio? Booting up the system. I got it. It's me. I thought you were worried our phones might be tapped. Be here. Call's already over. Content's unclear. Target entering the complex. Taking some distance. Are we about to get caught talking to that lady? When my vision returns, I realize I've been hurled out the alley. How is my first question? I was going home. I was at my door. So this is at the start when we got exploded. Okay, so we we're just getting back to that. I managed to get my torso upright again and think. And I feel something warm on my left hand. Slowly, I turn my aching neck. Checking what it is I'm touching. A corpse. Identity indeterminate. Probably alive only seconds ago. Meat now. The explosion. This must be someone from my building, caught in the blast. Or a pedestrian who was just walking by. Whichever it is, today wasn't their day. My eyes go to my room. There's, there's smoke rising from it. If I'd reacted any later, I'd be dead. It was the call from Linda that saved me. Had the talk not put me on high alert, I could have activated my powers. Couldn't have activated my powers in time. Not my first choice of rescuer. I don't want to move, but I don't have a choice. If that explosion was intended for me, somebody might be by to make sure it worked. I have to get out of here. I'm not in any condition right now to fight. With the wall's help, I drag myself to my feet and walk. What am I doing? All right. Chapter two in the footsteps of silence. So we're back up to where we were at the very, very start. And Ryoko is the, in the picture for this one. So this is about her then? I'm in a dream. In the dream there's a city. How do I know this is a dream? It's because the city no longer exists. This is the seventh before the cult broke it. It's been too long. I don't feel a scra any scrap of nostalgia. The sight of it only brings that moment to mind. The man who stood, undeniable in my way. The man who stared at me and spoke not a word. Move. Dead men don't speak. Maybe they can be scared off. The man, Musashi, looks at me with pity and opens his mouth quietly. You're still doing this, Ruka? We're not on a first name basis. Move. I make my voice colder than the first time. You want through here, you better go another way. Huh. <laughs> you think you're still my boss? I'll go wherever, I, whichever way I want. And I won't let anyone get in my way. Nonsense. Nonsense how? The only way you know how to go is forward. You can't weave left and right like other people do. Because you never learned how to adapt. Shut it. Since when do you get to lecture me? Maybe I don't. But you're looking at me, aren't you? And we're having a chat? You're just that damn desperate to see me? You're hilarious. I don't have time to waste remembering your face. Dream or not, you better move. I stick my hand out. Ice powers, huh? Your special power. For being born a descendant of the cursed blaze race. That's one screwed up power. What? You got an ability that's too big for you. That's what created the failure. Ruka hit you. Gotta wonder what he thinks gives him the right. If only you'd been born powerless. If I didn't, then what? I look at him in the eyes and ask. You could have been a cop as good as Ikuta. Not some gutter detective like you are now. Don't make me laugh. I crack a mirthless smile at this dream Musashi. My pal's the only reason you ever picked me up. If I'd been a regular kid living under a bridge, you think that'd have made me a better cop? I'd have died in the gutter, friendless and badgeless. Or I'd have gone the other way and become a criminal. You got that? Then buzz off. And don't get in my way again. You just don't want to listen, huh, kid? Far from moving aside, Musashi stands taller. So I'll just have to stop you. You're not funny. No sense wasting good comebacks on the dead. I reach out with my power, sending frost at his feet. From his feet up onto his neck, I freeze him. Let's see you stop me now. Nice try, Ruka. His right arm should be a block of ice, but it moves. Slowly at first, and then the ice breaks. Cripes! He reaches without hurry for a cigarette. He takes a drag. You're the one who can't stop me. I freeze up past the neck this time. I don't want to hear another word out of him. I freeze him solid, and before he can react, shatter him. But, the ice seems to break off him like a shell. 
leaving Musashi standing unscathed beneath. You want to give up yet? You can't beat me. You're invincible inside my dream or something? Then I'll just ignore you. I walk right by him. I glance around at his back from time to time as I go on. Should have just done that to start with. He shows no sign of chasing me. So I walk and walk. Then somehow I find myself back at that scene. And... Still at it, huh, kid? How do you get in front of me? There's Musashi again, looking at me with that pity in his eyes. Guess I just can't lose him. You want to do that again? It won't help. Musashi helpfully explains, just in case I hadn't noticed. Buzz off. What do you even want, anyway? Give up. The only way you're pulling out of this spiral is if you give up on everything you want. Do that and I'll set you free. Choke on my... balls. <laughs> Sensing that this is a lost cause, I freeze him in triplicate anyhow. But this time, my power doesn't even work on him. Choke on my... balls! You don't change, do you? It's kinda cute, but it's causing you trouble. Now get out of my world, you don't belong here. Stick around and you'll never see your own world again. Shut up. Shut your trap. I throw my power out recklessly over the area, trying to snap freeze this entire world. We're not getting anywhere here right now. Gee, don't think it'll be too long before we meet again. Musashi's body begins to fade away before my eyes. But the next time I see you, you'll be... His voice slips away with the darkness. Are we in hospital? <laughs> Get. On comes the pain, and with it, consciousness. Haruka! Haruka! I know that whiny voice. Claris? You're awake? Yeah. All of that before was definitely a dream. A pathetic one. Haruka! But it felt strangely real. Musashi's face, which I thought I'd forgotten, is burned fresh and clear into my mind's eye. Haruka? Almost as if... Haruka! Man, it's noisy in here. Do you know where you are? Huh? You seem kind of out of it. Guess I can't blame her for worrying. Of course I know where we are. I pull my torso upright. This is an elf hospital. You showed me. I'm the one who dragged myself here. The doctor told me. He said you look bad. It wasn't pretty. One wrong step and I probably would have died. Let's be glad you didn't. Forget me, I got a question. How's the building? It's a disaster site. Seven residents lost their lives. Seven, huh? Seven. Feels wrong to say, but only seven? Remembering the devastation, that feels almost lucky. What about our friend? Is Chiffon okay? I think of the tiny powerhouse he lives next door. Her room might have been obliterated in the blast too. Maybe she was out and then she'd have survived, but... The truth is, she was at home when it happened. What? It was very late. She wouldn't have been out. And... It's hard to say this when you're in such a bad state. She's not... Chiffon can't be di It's as you fear. The explosion ruined my sleep. Then take a nap. Chiffon comes in so blasé I can't resist a little sass. The sudden movement caused a sharp pain in my side. Ow, 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 ow. You should lie still. You shouldn't foreshadow tragedy to invalids. I'm not the one who tried to karate chop Chiffon. You got so badly roughed up. It was hard to tell you that Chiffon got out completely unhurt. I guess that makes sense, but... Who the hell survives a blast like that? You're talking as if you wanted me to die. I mean, it shredded me. How are you in one piece? I demand an explanation. I was at least on guard. She must have been lying, taking it lying down. The moment I sensed the impact, I took a, def took a defensive stance. She mimes what happened. That doesn't help either. Somehow that doesn't sound proportional. Chiffon's hardy even for a Seged, but... She was right next to the center of the explosion. She's standing there like it never happened. I'm just glad you're alive. Decided not to think about it? Applying logic to Segets is a waste of time. That's my new hypothesis. Stay tuned for my paper. Our strength isn't illogical or anything. I'm so glad to see that Rook is okay. I don't think I got your house blown up. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Actually, I've been lent a helping hand with that. A helping hand? Mr. Strickos arranged a new room for me. I'm told the security is flawless, so it's a safe place for a girl to live. If explosions can't touch you, I doubt that's an issue. Chiffon doesn't need it, she is the security. I have other things to get to, so I need to be going. In the middle of the night? Night! You realise it's daytime. You were under for a long while. Oh. 
Some, some time must have passed since the explosion. Thanks for coming by. Not at all. I'll let Strikos know that you're well. Tell him I want a fruit basket and some get well soon cash. I'll let him know. <laughs> Could you learn anything about what happened? I haven't told Clarice my own picture of it. Yes, first the flashpoint of the blast. It was your room. Oh really? So the explosion was aimed at me. Who the fuck else would it be? It's also conceivable that the culprit was looking for any unattended room, but it seems safe to assume. Yeah, it is. What's really weird is that Chiffon wasn't hurt. I think so as well. Chiffon is resilient, but with the scope of that explosion, she shouldn't have come out without a scratch. The bomb must have been very carefully directed. It seems it was arranged as to maximise damage in the direction of the door. Set to slaughter anyone who came in the entrance. Yeah. Kinda got enemies everywhere, you know. Whoever did this must have had a hell of a grudge. You don't know who it might have been? I got too many ideas to narrow it down. Coming to this clinic was the right call. At a regular hospital, they might have finished me off. Yeah, good thing. I think I'm gonna need a nap to get my strength back. It's been nice being conscious, but everything hurts. I'll keep a lookout so you can rest easy. We'll see. I'm gonna see Musashi again. I'll let the Sandman sandbag me, sandbag me again. I wonder how much time has passed. Five seconds? Ten? Might have been more like five or ten hours. Clarice is conked out in the chair looking exhausted. I sit up straight and try to feel out my body. I think it'll move. I swing myself out of bed and onto my feet. It still hurts, but I should be functional. As a warm-up, I make a foray out of the room. Sitting on the sofa is a little lobby in the little lobby is a man. What brings you here? We had reached me that an idiot I know almost died, but screwing it up and <laughs> screwed it up and wound up living. I came to see what's left of his filthy face and found him snoring up a storm. Save it. I glance outside where Fuyumi is on lookout. Is your idea of protecting a guy? It's my idea of protecting myself from the kind of people who take a shot at assassinating you. He stands and turns his back. You'll be in tomorrow, I take it. I was thinking of taking some time off on workers' comp. Don't be late. Zero sympathy for your poor injured colleague, eh? Did he come all the way here to give me sass? That'd be a waste of time, he's not the type. He came to check on my injuries directly. Never a good idea blowing up a cop. Someone threw a nasty rock at my pond. At this point, I can't say where the ripples will go. Well, I guess we can't be that bad then if we're expected at work tomorrow. Are you really okay to be leaving, Ruka? The next morning, I get Clarice to come pick me up. I'm fine. What I don't understand is why you needed me. Somebody's got to foot my hospital bill. It's not like I got money on me. I had to call someone. Good to see your in inimitable charm is intact. Inimitable? Ain't that a term of endearment? Not to me. <laughs> so I give her the stink eye until she goes to pay. In my book, that means I won the conversation. And I don't walk around with my wallet most of the time. On purpose, I'm sure. Or with enough cash for more than one day. That's a point of pride. But not designed to stand up to an unscheduled trip to the hospital. It feels so good to be alive. Great, so glad you undead. Don't sound happy I'm on my feet again. And you know exactly why that is, I think. Huh? Don't you harm me. I expect you to pay me back, understood? As soon as I get that bonus I've got coming. I won't hold my breath. More importantly, what are you planning to do now? What do you mean? You know how you were just almost killed. Yeah, kinda. Who hates you that much? Beats me. Got any guesses? How should I know who hates you? Is what I'd like to say, but... Staring at my beautiful face, she sighs. What? I have too many guesses to narrow it down. Then start listing. Well, the first people who come to mind are the moneylenders in your district. You borrowed all you could and never returned it, didn't you? Next up would be the moneylenders in the Horizon District. Followed by your local eateries. Where you've run up completely out of control tabs. Other than that... Can he get exploded over a tab? I can think of another 16 suspects. That's too many, alright. Could have been any of them. Right? Everyone would love to see you dead. Kinda jump to an actual murder, though. They only hate me casually. Don't underestimate them. Many people hate you at a professional level. <laughs> Sounds kinda like you sympathize. I've let you money before myself. So you're out there hating me every day. Some days I wanna ki- <clears throat> My point is, listing suspects would take all day. I think we need to put her on the list. Somehow I don't think the word she coughed off was kiss. 
Was it you? What? Maybe you're part of the conspiracy. If I killed you, I'd never get my money back. When the time comes, I'll get mine back first. I don't like how much she's thought this through. No point worrying about it then. Well, it's probably not over. Why not request protection? Protection? From the police? Tell them your life is in danger and you need a guard. Okay, I'm the police, so I guard myself. That would defeat the purpose. You knew that when you suggested it. Bastard. Please just don't do anything crazy, okay? If you got yourself killed in some silly way, it could ruin my sleep for weeks. I'll try not to die then. Yeah, she'll never get her money back. Ah, damn, my whole body hurts. Are you sure you don't want to take today off? I'd do that if I could, alright? Can't, so I gotta tough it out. What do you mean? That's a serious question. You think I'd be better off sleeping in the hospital? Yes, I really do. If I thought I could get away with cuddling that cozy bed some more, I would, but... Think about this a little. There's some mystery punk with a serious grudge. Now, what they do to the apartment I lived in. They set explosives and blew it up. Oh. Clarus finally puts it together. So the hospital would be in danger if you stay there. Sounds about right. Chiffon survived because she's ludicrously strong, but the doctor wouldn't live through a blast like that. That would be bad, and that would be a hundred times worse than if you died. You know, you didn't have to actually clarify. Pinch. Ow, ow. Please don't pull on my cheek. It's nice and soft like a marshmallow. Flattery is no excuse. That wasn't intended as a compliment, but I guess you could take it that way. Anyway, my best bet is to keep moving. And I doubt anybody's going to blow up the MPA to get me. That makes sense. You've thought about it, haven't you? Sure did. Like me better now? Yes. Your rating just went up by 50 points. Sounds like a solid improvement. The maximum value is 100,000. Your current score is 50. So that's a 0.05% evaluation. You want to die? The physical state of me aside, we make it to the agency. The walk took us twice as long as it should have. But I'm not any more eager than usual to sit down to work. I'll go on ahead. With clock and time impending, Claris breaks into a run. Hey, hold on a sec. Why? Tell me the third tell the thirteenth crew I'm not badly hurt. I don't want this getting out of hand. I can't see what the point is, but no your problem, just help me out, okay? Understood. Ruka! Inside a woman stops me waving. Here comes trouble. I whisper, but those ears never miss a thing. It's Kamachi. She serves as an officer in the traffic division. She's also the MPA's ever churning rumor mill. Guess who heard you almost died yesterday? Hell of a thing to say with a smile, you wish it stuck? Of course not, that's so silly. You think I want to spend money on funeral stuff? Fair enough. God damn it, no, that still sucks. <laughs> what kind of mess are you neck deep in this time? My neck's not deep in anything. Then why'd your room get exploded? The really weird part is that it hasn't been seen in the news at all. To the point that it's kind of scary. It seems strange to me too. The blast in my apartment killed several people. It should be a media bonanza right now. But it stayed mostly under wraps, like somebody put out orders to keep it that way. Wouldn't want people thinking they can target detectives. So you think the higher ups are leaning on the media? Who knows? Ask your dad. He wouldn't say. Work is work for him, even with me. Fat lot of you see us then. Now he's got no info. She just here to sass me? Good thing you're okay. Suddenly Kamachi pats me on the back. Don't overdo it out there, you hear me? She spins up again, probably in search of more gossip. Maybe that was her way of expressing worry? That lady's got layers. <laughs> like an ogre. Outside the 13th, I bumped into Nagade. She must be just getting here as well. What's up? She's staring at me, so I ask why. Rest in peace. I'm not dead. I heard you were. Who's been telling people that? The moment I'm through the door, I go, go for Tamako. Yo! You already out of the hospital? Can't keep me down. I heard you took the brunt of an explosion. If nothing else, you're certainly difficult to kill. Well, they did liken me to a cockroach earlier. Is that a compliment? You sure you're not wishing it was easier? Perish the thought. I wouldn't want to have to buy a license for your funeral. There are a lot of good games coming out this month, and I prefer to avoid unexpected expenses. That's my big welcome back from you, huh? From the bottom of my heart, I'm glad you're alive. Yeah, because it means you get to save on incense. Oh, incense, sorry. I hold the come- How much does incense cost? They hold the comeback in. Anyway, I need something from you. I doubt I can provide it. You can if you'll listen. Okay then, speak. 
I want to lead on whoever blew up my apartment. Of course you do. What? That's why I told you I couldn't provide. The brass put the kibosh on it? Yes, that would be why. Then keep it on the down low. Impossible. I was warned that a misstep here could get me fired. You knew how to try and play this, huh? I'd try to play this, huh? Your behaviour is not what I would call complex. Looks like I'll have to look into my into it myself. I'll be rooting for you, just not helping. When the going gets tough, Tamako gets gone. Sounds like I shouldn't bring the explosion up around the station. If I'm investigating myself, I'd better keep it quiet. Yo, Sasuke! In the smoking area, I find Sasuke already a puffin. You aren't easy to kill, eh? Not so much. You didn't even drop in to check on me, did you? Did you want me to? Absolutely not. I wouldn't come to see you on a sick bed if you're rattling out your last breaths. Then you get the picture. We stand a good distance apart taking leisurely drags. Sadly though, it's too good a chance to piss away. I asked Tamako for some help, she shut me down hard. Did word come down not to touch my case? Maybe it did. I hadn't heard, but it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise you either, would it? Maybe not. Fighting the cult is a lonely war. Who said anything about the cult? Nobody had to. Because the whole division's probably guessed. Most of them have the tact not to say it. You must have had a lonely war too, hunting Schwal. Stop trying to rope other people into this. It's as dangerous for them as it is for you. Thanks for the oh so wise warning, wise master. Well, bring it on. You see the fireworks they put on just to try and kill me? Sounds like I'm too dangerous to leave alive. Better freak them out that I'm still in one piece. Now that they've made the decision to take you out, the fireworks will only escalate. You'll have to watch your back everywhere you go. Think I can back off and be safe again? Not at this point. You push the cult into overt action. They want you dead badly. They'll commit to making it happen. Who do you think's in charge? Schwald is a key player, but he's long gone. Sasuke looks up at the ceiling, contemplative. Schwald is dead. Or is he? I'm not sure I'm convinced. Because his body disappeared. I remember the picture Kodoma showed me. Schwald is alive and he's active again. But I'll keep that tidbit to myself. Do you think Schwald's alive? No, I don't. There's just something about it that sticks in my teeth. It sticks in yours too, doesn't it? Maybe. But he hasn't shown his face. So that means he's dead. It ought to. Sasuke puts out a smoke and leaves through the glass door. If he knew that Schwab was alive, he'd be after him. He's chase... Chase him again and this time maybe get himself a lonely death? Alright, we need to wrap this one up. We need to wrap this one up. I'm sorry. We're out of time for today, but we need to wrap this one up. Alright, we're in chapter two. We're uh, past where we started again, and uh, we got to find out who exploded our house. Sounds like a good place to start. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting out for me, and I'll see you in the next one.